Hi, you're watching Lavish Web Creations. I'm Miguel Coder, and today I'm gonna to show you something really fun. I'm gonna show you how to make a chatbot with Vue.js. So in this tutorial, I won't be coding the back end of our bot because that's a lot of work. Instead, I'm going to be using the Cleverbot API and I'm going to be sending a request to Cleverbot and then printing the responses from Cleverbot onto the screen. The purpose of this tutorial is one, to give you a bit of an understanding of how Ajax works and two, to teach you how to interact with different web services on the internet. All right guys, so we're just gonna be making a chat box like this one right here. And all it does is it just receives an input and it talks to a chat bot. <clears throat> and then when that chat box sends its reply, it will put that message into your chat box. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we wanna create a new project. So we're going to type view create chat box. And we're gonna choose Bobble and ESLint. All right, so then once that's done, I just wanna close this terminal because I'm gonna open up a terminal in VS Code. So I wanna open up my finder, I'm gonna to go to my folder and I'll find my chat box folder here and drop it into VS Code. And then I'm gonna open up this little terminal here that VS Code gives you so handily. <clears throat> I'm gonna type npm run surf. And then what I want to do is while that's loading up is I'm going to go to my main.js and I want to import Axios from Axios. And then I want to have Axios available in all of my components. And since all of the components extend this view class, then all I want to do is extend that view class so that I can add something to it. So I'm just going to say view.prototype dollar axios equals axios <clears throat> and so now all of my components will have axios bound to their this variable so now that i've got axios if i save it it's gonna fail and it's gonna say we don't have any axios so i'm just gonna npm i dash d axios all right and then i'm going to npm run serve and then i'm going to go to my app.view because it's telling me to use this hello world component and also, I don't want this view image here, even though it's pretty awesome. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these hello worlds and I'm going to change it to chat box, <clears throat> right? And now it's going to error out because I don't have a chat box component. So I'm going to take this hello world component and I'm going to rename it to chat box as well. And then inside of here, I'm going to take my template. I'm going to change this div to chat box. I'm going to change this to a section. And then I'm going to remove all of this style and I'm going to change the name of this to chat box and I don't have any props going into it. <clears throat> so now all I have is my container code, right? And everything seems to be compiling properly. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna have a box and in that box I wanna have a list which is going to have my list of chat messages. And then beneath that I wanna have another box with my chat inputs which will contain my input, my text input, and my button to send the text. So what I wanna do is I wanna have a div class equals chat <clears throat> box list container. And then I want to have a UL. And then I want to have an LI uh, called message. All right, and then uh, let's see. So now what I wanna do is I wanna start creating my variables because this is where I wanna start adding my messages here. So, and then also I want to have another div here called chat inputs, right? And then <clears throat> inside of that div, I want to have an input and I want it to be bound to my message variable. And then I want to have a button and I want that button to say send and on click, I want to send message on my input. I want to at key up dot enter the same thing, send message. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take all these and put them on the next line so that it looks more elegant. And so I don't have this message yet, so I'm gonna create it. 
So I have data message, right? And then I have methods because I don't have this send message function either. So I'm going to create send message. And then on send message, I'm going to say this dot dollar axios dot get. I just have this copied from another one that I that I worked on. So I'm just going to say this dot message. And then I also have uh, messages, which is going to be an array. And I need a comma right here. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll say dot then res uh, <clears throat> this. So before I send this message, what I want to do is I want to send a message to my messages variable. So I'll say this dot messages dot push. And then I'm going to say text equals this dot current message. And then author equals client because this is us sending a message to the bot. So we're, we'll call that the client. All right. And then in our dot then when we receive our message back, it will be bound to the dot output property of our of our data response. So we'll say this dot messages dot push text this dot current uh, I'm sorry res dot data dot output and then the author is going to be server. Boom. And so that's so now we have this message here that's being pushed in and then we're doing a get request to get a response from the chat bot. And then once we have that response, we're going to use that response to push another message to our messages array. Only this message is going to belong to our chat bot. So I have this li over here and I want to loop through each value in our messages array. And to do that, I'm going to use v4. I'm going to say v4 message index in messages. And then vetter complains that we need a key. So I'm going to set key to Oops, index, okay. And then inside of here, I will be able to access each message. So I'll say message.text. And uh, I wanna put this in a p tag. And then inside of that p tag, I'm gonna put it in a span tag because I want the message to span all the way across, but I don't necessarily want the color, the background of that message to span all the way across. So I put that inside of a span. So, then I do this and I close the p tag and I should have messages now and I should be able to send a message and that should be it. So let's see if that works. So we'll go here and we have stuff. We send a message and we get our response. Okay. So the only problem is our first message didn't go up there. So we're having an error here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's because this dot message, that's why. Okay, and so now if we go ASDF, blah, 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 there it is, and they respond back. Okay, so now our stuff is working. All right, so now all we wanna do is style this thing. So I'm gonna start from the top most div, and I'm going to just go all the way down into, the, into all the lower, the inside divs, okay? And then also, uh, for this li right here, I just want to have a class of this li, I want to have a dynamic class called uh, message .author, Okay, so now I'll have my client and server classes so that I can change the way the message looks depending on who's writing it. All right, so now, uh, so let's type in some messages, and then we'll just start. We'll just start styling it. So the first thing we want to do is turn this into a flex box. So the first thing is dot chat box. And then I'm also going to use SCSS for this because it's syntactically awesome. Uh, and then so uh, I have to install node sass. So I'm just going to run npm i dash d capital D node sass and sass loader because I want to be able to use sass in my projects. So I want my chat box list to display flex, but I also want my chat box list to display flex. So I'm going to use dot chat box and then dot chat box list, which is my UL. And then I'm going to put display flex and then flex direction column. Uh, list style 
type none. Oh. All right, so now as you can see, I did list style type none and my list things are gone. So all I wanna do is take this chat box and I want to put a border around it. So I'm going to say dot chat box, I'm gonna say border 1px solid 999, okay? Then I have a border, okay? And then also I wanna do width of 50 view height, view width, so it's not that big, okay? And then I want to make it a border radius of 4px so that it looks prettier. And then I'm going to do margin left auto, margin right auto. All right, and that's gonna put my chat box right in the middle. Okay, and then after that, I've also got this other div where I have these inputs and this send button. So I need to start styling those. So I'm gonna make another class called chat inputs, which contains my inputs. And one of my inputs is going to have a line height of three, okay? And then it's going to have a width of 100%, okay? So it's gonna span all the way across. And then this chat inputs, it's gonna be display flex, yeah, so display flex, okay, so now I have my button over there. So now I just have to style my button, and my button is going to be a width of 135px, because that's a nice color that I like. All right, that's a nice size that I like. So now we have this input here, and we want to remove some of the borders. So I'm gonna say border, 1px, solid, uh, 999. I'm gonna say border left, none, border bottom, none, and border right, none. Okay, so now the borders from the other parts are gonna take over. And then I also need a border bottom right, left, sorry, left radius of 4px. And you can barely see it, but it just makes it so that there's this, this little notch here isn't covering our, our beautiful border radius over here. Uh, so then for my input, I want to put a padding left of 15 pixels, uh, just so my text comes out a little bit more. So it's not just all the way up to the left. And then for my button, I want a, I might even want a little bit more width on there. Yeah, I might say like 145 actually. All right, and then I want the text to be white. So background's gonna be this pretty blue color that I like so much. All right, and so now we've got a button there, and then I think I wanna add some border bottom right radius of 4px. Uh, and that just gives me that little curve there. Okay, so now inside of my chat box list, I have li elements and I have a dot server and a dot client. Okay, and in each one of these we have a span, a background blue. All right, and then this one's gonna be span, background green. Okay, all right, and then we're gonna add, for each span inside of here, we're gonna say padding 8px. Okay, so now we have some padding, and we're gonna have color white, and we're gonna have border radius 4px. All right, so we're gonna do padding left zero to this chat box list, and then so we're almost done. All we need to do is make sure that the server's messages line up on the left and that our messages line up on the right. So in each of these, there's a P tag, right? And for the server, we want to float left, right? And for us, we want to float right. Okay. 
And then our chat box will have a height of 60 view height. Okay, oops, wait a minute. Justify content space between. There we go. All right, so then we'll set this to about 50. And then for our box, we'll add a margin top of 10 PX. Okay, so now we have some margin on the top. And then for this one, we have, let's see. Oh, it's perfect. So we've got margin on our chat box list already. Okay, so then, uh, so now we don't have to add any margin on that, but for our chat box list, I wanna add some 10 pixel margin all the way around. So I just need to go in chat box list, that's why. And so now our messages are showing up the way we want them to, but we just have a few little bugs here. So uh, the first bug is that if we type a message, our message doesn't clear after we send it, okay? So to fix that, all we have to do is go here to right before we send our message, and we'll, or we'll just say this.message equals blank, okay? And then after that, Okay, so that should fix our problem. All right, so now it's clearing whenever we, whenever we send a message, okay? And so the next problem we're having is that if we type too many messages and it overflows, then we're not gonna be able to see, it's, it's gonna overflow through over our, our div, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and set this div here to overflow scroll. So if I say overflow scroll like that, then I should be able to scroll down and do all this stuff. So if I just go down, all right, so to get this to scroll, what we want to do is we want to create this chat box list container rule, and we just want to put overflow scroll. Okay, so now this chat box list container will overflow. Whenever it overflows, it will, it will scroll, okay? And so now the only other issue we have is that whenever we send a message, we want this to scroll all the way to the bottom, but it doesn't. So we have to scroll ourselves. So what we want to do is after we send our message and our message has already rendered onto the DOM, then we want to scroll all the way to the bottom of our list. So what we'll do is we'll say this dot dollar next tick. And what dollar next tick does is it allows you to execute a callback function with some code in it after the DOM has already re-rendered. So once we send this message to our messages array and the DOM has re-rendered and it has our new message, then we're going to say this dot dollar refs dot chat box dot scroll top equals this dot dollar refs dot chat box dot scroll height, right? And we haven't created our reference yet. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and we will say ref equals chat box and now we have a reference to our HTML element. So now if I go in here and I type messages, I type a whole bunch of messages. All right, now it's scrolling all the way to the bottom. See that? Awesome. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed and if there's anything else you'd like me to show you, please leave some messages in the comments and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Peace.